they can like move back a little so I can zoom in. Also, if they could back up onto the field or away from them, like if they could get at the 50 yard line or something, that would be cool. Welcome to Bob Pate Stadium and tonight's UPSL Men's Midwest West Conference match between the St. Paul Blackhawks and Flora FC. Tonight, Flora FC is inducting two men into our Hall of Fame. Dean Casco is a Brazilian midfielder who played for Flora for seven years, from 2014 to 2021. Jason Lentz is a Turkish midfielder who played for Flora FC for eight years, from 2013 to 2021. Both players won eight trophies together with our club. As a pair, they were unstoppable. Two warriors that gave it all for the club every time they stepped onto the field. They complemented each other and became a dominating force. Every team wanted them, but the duo was loyal to our red and black for many years. Today, we recognize their achievement and thank them for everything they have done for Flora. They represented our colors and paved the way, helping us become the club we are today. Congratulations to Jason Lentz and D. Arme Castro on joining our Hall of Fame.
We are going to start with tonight's national anthem and then we will introduce the starting lineup. Let's meet the starting lineup beginning with the Blackhawks. Number 11, Number 11 at forward, Yosef Abdallah. Number 2 at defense, Herbert Pereira. Number 17 at midfield, Joe Dewich. Number 14, midfield, Jackson Lagos. Number seven, midfield, Anthony Mancio. Number four, at defense, Hendrick Mete. Number 55, the goalkeeper, Angel Olivio. Number 22, forward, Kaspar Olsa. Number six, playing defense, defense Ryan, Ryan Swanda. Swanda. And, number and number three, three at, defense, at defense, Jones Walker, Walker Patterson. Patterson. The head coach is Carter Albrecht. And now, and now the starters for Laura FC. FC. Number one, the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper Mitchell, Mitchell Wolf. Wolf. Number five, Number five defense, defense, Hector, Hector Figueroa. Figueroa. Number three, Number three at, at defense, defense Jacob, Jacob Bent. Bent. Number four, at defense, at defense Oscar, Oscar Alvarez. Alvarez. Number six, midfielder, midfielder Avery, Avery Larson. Larson. Number eight, Number eight at, at midfield, midfield Demetrius, Demetrius Bernardi Nelson. Nelson. Number, ten, Number ten, at midfield, at midfield Alejandro, Alejandro Cosmopele. Cosmopele. Number 18, at midfield, at midfield Adonis Vicente. Number two, midfielder Ricardo Vera. At midfield, number 21, Claude Sulich. And at forward, number 16, Robert Cooper. The head coach is Alan Gorosieta. The assistant coaches are Abi Adi Bolani and Isaac Renteria.
Good evening and welcome to Bob Pate Stadium in Burnsville, Minnesota for tonight's United Premier Soccer League men's match between Vlora FC and visiting St. Paul Blackhawks. The Blackhawks enter the match in fifth place in the Midwest West Conference with 16 points. They have scored 16 goals this season and allowed 11. Vlora FC is one place ahead of them, sitting in fourth place at 17 points. They need a win or tie tonight to secure a spot in the playoffs. Flora has scored 20 goals while only allowing nine. This is the final regular season game for Flora. They've lost their last two games after starting the season with five wins and two draws. So they come in this season, five wins, two draws, and two defeats. St. Paul is sitting with five wins, one draw, and three defeats. These last two games were both losses by one goal to Superior City Football Club and St. Croix Soccer Club. Flora wearing their customary home red uniforms. They'll be going red right to left across the pitch today. It is a very warm Wednesday evening here in Burnsville, Minnesota. Upper 80s and humid. See if that plays a factor. Flora begins with possession. Play it back, controlling it out of the backside here. Long ball down the near touch line. One's flicked up in the air. Shielded by the Blackhawks. So that goes into touch. They'll have the throw right around the 35 of the football field. A little miscommunication there as that one goes into touch near midfield. We'll have another throw in here. Early on in this pivotal matchup, Flora starting the season, as I said, red hot with zero losses in their first seven matches, but two consecutive have put this in this put them in this precarious position. Here's a over-the-head ball. That one's onside. Wolf comes off his line to play that. Well done there at the corner of the box preventing any sort of scoring opportunity. Nice little flick down the far touch line. I believe maybe we, we had a handball there as Flora is going to take the short free kick and just play the possession game. Swinging it around, looking for an opportunity to advance it down the field. Back to Wolf. This one goes into touch. We'll have another throw in. St. Paul. Get that one near the 18, pass it across the middle, looking for an opportunity. Fortunately, that's well defended and cleared to midfield. St. Paul defense recovers possession, through ball here into the box, but that one's hunted down by number five, Trigueros. Nice heady defensive play there. Nice step up by Vlor to win that one, and they're going to play it out of danger. High ball lands at midfield, quickly run down. Good pressure there by number 18. That's Vicente. Aggressive pressure on the ball, making it hard for St. Paul to get control. Well done. Vlor throws that one in. Knocked down from behind. Be our first foul of the half for either, either team. Sulich is going to take this one. It's about 35 yards out straight to the goal line, so at the angle it's going to be a little bit farther. You math geniuses out there can 
figure that out if you know the distance. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, according to Pythagoras. Played short, but freed out of there by Blackhawks defense, so Valora's going to regroup. It's Benz from his outside back position playing that one into touch. Benz heads this one. Sulich knocked down from behind off his head and into touch. A lot of the play so far on the near touch line here. I'm not sure if the the goal there is to, to work this, this part of the field or if it's just the hope that there's some shade over here and they can get out of this heat. Not a bad strategy once the game gets a little farther in as the sun sets behind us. Into the Blackhawks bench. They'll restart it from there with a throw in. Play it deep. One nicely by Vora. We're going to have a foul called here. Not quite sure what that was, but perhaps a little too aggressive from behind. If so, then it appears that the center ref is keeping things tight here. Not a bad idea for a referee to get, get control early. We've seen what happens when it goes the other way. When they don't call a lot of fouls, the players start to get frustrated and take some liberties and then things can get a little bit out of hand out there so tight calls early is probably a good way to go for a game with two teams that can be physical once played into the 18 Flora fortunately gets that one first the initial clearing attempt was missed but the second one is not played high into the air it comes back into orbit Blackhawks have it nice slide tackle there, this one is played deep. Is he onside? It looks like the answer is yes. It's one on two. Plays to the middle. Oh, he drops back. There's an opportunity to shot and just a bit outside. A great setup there. The long ball over the head of the defense was perfectly timed as he stayed onside. Mad rush down the far side. Brought it back into the middle and dropped it. I believe that was Cooper with the shot. Unfortunately, got underneath it. First really good scoring chance for either club. There's an errant pass that's won by Flora. Alejandro Cosmopalis won that one, number 10. Now the Blackhawks have it on the near touch. They play it. Complete that one onside. Defense gets back. Here's a through ball. Just intercepted in the nick of time there, but now it's headed right back into danger. That one's flicked deeper, and that one's going to go over the goal line. We'll have our first goal kick for Wolf. Wolf, in the last home game, had a drop kick that went about three quarters of the field and then was headed by the defense. It ended up bouncing up and over the opposing goalkeeper and Wolf was credited for the goal as the last player for Vlora to touch the ball so rare to see a goalkeeper play goal just goalkeeper and end up with a tally in the goal scoring column but he did just that one of the more fun things I've seen in quite some time on a soccer pitch balls at midfield this one's going to be controlled back to the defense of the Blackhawks here. Oh, a little dummy play gets by both of them, but well defended. Laura maintaining possession. Oh, fancy footwork there. We're going to get a foul called. Nice little move by Oscar Alvarez. He won that with the slide tackle, got up, maintained possession, got tripped, and it was called, although possibly could have been advantage, although I don't blame the referee for blowing the whistle on that one. Oftentimes you will see a, a ref if they feel that it's in the 
team's interest to continue play will let will let a foul go. Especially if they're in an opportunity to potentially put a, a ball on net and score a goal. As is customary for Vlora, they're controlling the, bell, the ball well out of the back line. They're very good at possession, looking for good opportunities. They will take a chance deep. Here's a head into the box. Defense does a nice job there. That's number three, Bents. Battling with the midfielder for the St. Paul Blackhawks. Forcing the ball out of play and a quick restart here by Wolf. They just go short. Again, wanting to possess, develop things out of the back. One of the better rule changes recently in soccer slash football is on a goal kick, not having to kick the ball out of the penalty box in order to have it touched by either team, or at least the the same team as the ball. They can they can just pass it short and play it. One of those rules that was around forever and they finally got rid of it. I wish every sport would find that one rule that doesn't make sense and just why do we continue to call this? Like basketball, where in college you can commit a charge and still get credit for the basket. That never makes sense. Oh, here's a potential scoring opportunity played up and back. Fortunately, an errant pass there looking for the corner. The defense, the Blackhawks quickly push it up for a counterattack. That one stifled temporarily by the Vlora backline. Now they're going to play a very long ball. Here's Benz. He's going to head that one back to Wolf. He can pick that up because of the play with the head. If you deliberately pass the ball with your feet to the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper cannot pick up that ball. St. Paul's going to regroup with a big pass back, and here's that example I was just talking about. It was played back deliberately, so he has to play that with something other than his hands. Long ball down the far touch line. We're going to have a cross here. Bence is there. He's going to win this one with his head. Nicely done. And that one is cleared past midfield. Little flick there. Doesn't quite connect by the Blackhawks. Now they got an opportunity as they come near the 18. They're going to take a right-footed shot. It is just wide. Wolf coming off his line, cutting off that angle. Dove could not make contact. As it turns out, didn't need to. The first shot of the game for St. Paul. Both teams now have one, one shot, but nothing officially on goal. So no saves for either goalkeeper. This one's played across open space defense. Now they'll play up to the midfield. A couple of quick passes there to relieve pressure. Oh, nice, nice piece of patience there by Vlora waiting for that seam and that opening to present itself. Threading that ball through, well done. Unfortunately, the attempt upfield was defended well. Benz will throw this one in. So it's headed into the middle. Jungaros is going to play that one back and then get it back from Wolf. Now he'll go long, coming to the near corner. Nice ball. Got Vicente there. Into the box. Knocked into touch. I believe this is going to be a... Looks like we might have our first corner of the game. Yes, that is the call. Sulich will take the corner kick down in the near corner. Vlora 
Commodore is lining up their set piece attack here. So it's taking this one left footed, so angling out. Oh, there's a header and it's off the upright of the football goal posts. A nice play there as he found the head of a teammate. Unfortunately, it was close to the net and he had to jump extremely high to make contact with that. A tough ball to, to bring down underneath the crossbar. We're into the 15th minute here, still no score. Both teams playing good defensively, shutting down most, most attacks. We've only had three shots combined. Oh, a nifty little play by Vicente to win possession, slide tackling away. Finds Larson, he's gonna just drop it back and we'll regroup here with Trigueros. Playing that pass back to Wolf, sort of. Not really defending that. Bent's looking for any longer options before he takes a shorter one. He is going to go deep. Nice job heading that one to a teammate. So Alvarez, Benz, Trigueros doing a great job there on the back line. Really controlling the ball, being patient, using Larson in the middle there. There's an attempt by the Blackhawks to interrupt possession. They do temporarily win it out at the corner of the box. This one's knocked into touch with a throw in for St. Paul. So finally decided to put on some pressure and not let Vlora continue to just hang back and be patient. Another step up there by the Vlora back line. This time I'd like to thank our club sponsors, Los Andes Latin Bistro and Jim Law Firm. Thank you so much for sponsoring the Vlora Football Club. Here comes the Blackhawks again. Run through the middle of the field into the attacking third. Pulls it back, plays it back to the corner. One touch into the middle, that one's knocked. Over the goal line, we'll have a corner kick, the first of the game for St. Paul. It's like St. Paul's going to have a short option here on the corner if they want to take it. They've got five guys in or near the penalty box and one guy out at the corner trying to spread things around. Two guys back defensively. They do play it short. They get that to the corner of the 18. Now they try to split defenders. Well defended by Vlora. Unfortunately it's going to go across the goal line for a second corner. Perhaps changing their strategy here and going with a deeper ball into the box. What happened this time? It looks like that's the case. Got too much of it. It goes over everybody. Easily tracked down by the defense. Fortunately, the pass just gets into touch. Trying to hook up with Benz there. Throwing is immediately headed towards the corner. Maybe a, maybe a miscommunication there for Blackhawks. One player thought the other player was making a different run. Nice flick on the 
floor a throw. This one's knocked forward and knocked forward again. Vicente putting pressure on about a step more and he would have really had an opportunity there. Here comes the Blackhawks down the far touch. They get into the box. A couple of defense. They center that one, but that's blocked again across the goal line. So this will be the third corner all on the far corner over there. So and again played deep. St. Paul adjusted and had a guy there to head it, but his whole body momentum was heading towards the goal line instead of towards the goal. That's a that's a tough tough ball to, to get anything on it of any sort of significance. Did a good job redirecting it at least somewhat near the goal, but no threat as the shot was wide. Little one two. Miscue there in the touch by Cooper will have a throw near the center stripe and across the center stripe as they always take their customary three to five yards. I don't remember what age they teach that at, but it is soccer 101. You get a throw in, you gain five yards. Looks like we're gonna have a little trip called there at the 40. That's another foul, and officially the third for St. Paul. Again, played short by Vlor. Here's some pressure by the Blackhawks trying to steal possession, and they do temporarily. Well done there by Vicente to get it back. Vicente had been playing over here on the near side, kind of coming up the left side for the first 18, 19 minutes of the half. Now it appears he's positioned to the far side of the field. Bernardi Nelson, number eight, now closer to us. We'll see if that results in anything. They, they may continue to switch back and forth just as the natural flow of the game progresses and opportunities arise of course making diagonal runs trying to confuse the defense Larson heads that one into touch another throw at midfield It's a burst of speed, well played. He's brought down from behind. That one will be called as an easy grab. In fact, so easy of a call and aggressive that it looks like number 14 is going to get a yellow cautionary card. It's midfield Jackson Lagos receives the yellow card. Here's one played by the goalkeeper. Good service ball into the 18. That's Olivo, Angel Olivo, the goalkeeper, number 55. Bentz wins that ball in the air. Cooper trying to chase it down, apply some pressure on the back line, see if they can't force a mistake. Chigueros has it, looking for someone short. He doesn't find anyone, so he plays it out of danger. Nicely done. Vicente's going to play this one, looking for Cooper. He's got him. He can split the defense. It's a foot race. Gets in near the 18. He's got two players on. He goes down. There is no foul called. It is waved off emphatically by the center referee. Play resumes. The 
Blackhawks wanting a foul on that defensive play by Vore, and center ref indicates there is no such call to be made. Feels like just in the last couple of minutes, the teams have gotten warmed up, kind of figured out a little bit about each other. Now the, the tempo, the aggressiveness is picking up just a little bit. One into the 18, here's a shot, that's well blocked. That was dangerous. Wolf coming out, takes out the Blackhawks forward. Again, no call will be made. This ball's, by the way, high in the air and still in. Oh, a fancy little jumping kick. Not quite a bicycle, but played well out of the air there to clear. Now it's all the way down to the near side, near the goal line. Looking for an opportunity to beat his defender. He goes between the legs, but still won by Vlor. Nicely done. Oh, that one's tapped out, but one temporarily back by the Blackhawks. That should be a trip called. And it is. Because Mopolis came over quickly in one possession. Got the trip, and we will have another restart. It's at least foul number five on St. Paul. Just just one so far on Vlora. Oh, nicely done there by Larson coming back. Winning possession, playing safe. They're using Wolf really well back in his goal. Here's Larson again. Wolf isn't just the, the, the goalkeeper, he's really the 11th footballer out there able to be a part of that important defense using his feet as another defender or in certain situations just punting the ball really far and, and scoring a goal there's a trip on Vlora at midfield Far side now around the 15-yard line. This one's played into the 18. Blackhawk fell down, nothing but a couple of floor defenders. Easy clear. Cooper putting light pressure on. Long ball, oh, and it was received by the Blackhawks, but then he lost his footing. A bit unlucky there. He's going to cross this one extremely high and through the tough angle football goal posts. That's well outside even the far tack lines of a college football stadium when they take those tough angle field goals. That was impressive. And given the High humidity and temperature still in the upper 80s. We are going to have a water break here. So both teams have had two shots apiece. All shots have been not on goal, so no saves for either goalkeeper. Flores taken one corner kick. The Blackhawks have had three, all within a relatively short time frame. Both teams got a, a header shot off of one of those corners. Couple of fouls so far for Vlora and got five on St. Paul. We do have a yellow cautionary card against the St. Paul Blackhawks midfielder number 14, Jackson Lagos. So we are here in the end of the 28th minute of a scoreless game. Once again, for those of you joining us perhaps a little late, a huge game for Vlora FC. Sitting in fourth place with 17 points, they need to tie or win in order to advance to the playoffs. If they were to lose, the Blackhawks would leapfrog over them into that fourth place spot. So a big game for both clubs. But the one-point advantage in the standings gives Vlor the benefit of being able to survive with a, with a draw.
Short water break coming to an end. We'll get going with the restart here in a little bit. It'll be a goal kick for Vlor down on the right side of your screen. No substitutions thus far for either team. Should Vlora be victorious and make the playoffs, keep your eyes and ears open on social media for the announcement of the first playoff game. And if it happens to be right back here at Bob Pate Stadium in Burnsville, of course it will be broadcast live right on Vlora TV. Available for all of you to watch. Hope you can join us. But first things first, let's take care of business tonight. End the losing streak. Get a little momentum heading into the playoffs. St. Paul throw at the 40. Goes to the far side, gets through the double team somehow, and now there's an opportunity as he breaks towards the middle. Can't find a shot. Cleared extremely highly into the air. Oh, that one's tapped forward. Actually worked out well for Flores. Now they're advancing. Here's a ball into the 18. It's a foot race. It's Cooper and the goalkeeper. Unfortunately, Cooper can't quite get there. A beautiful ball forward. Almost a great scoring chance there for Cooper. Cooper does lead, lead the team in goals. He's got four on the season. St. Paul considering putting that one deep, thought better of it. They're gonna possess from the back line. Try to advance things a little more strategically. Ooh, that one's intercepted. Here's an opportunity for a counter, quick counter. Maybe a little too hasty on that decision as Laura had numbers. Some contact. Just into touch for a throw. No, no foul called. He walks the ball down the touchline, throws it in. I think that clearing attempt went exactly where he wanted that one to go, but that's all right. pass into the middle. This one's played in the 18. Once again, Vence is there. He's been challenged on the near side down in the corner, and he has won every challenge thus far, always either keeping the defender to the outside, forcing the ball into touch over the goal line, or just winning possession by shielding. I mean, just some really good, solid defensive play. Here's an opportunity trying to get it through and can't quite get enough on that one. Looking for Bernardi Nelson, number eight. Blackhawks will switch fields over to the far side. Vicente with another nice slide tackle. He's, I believe he's had a couple already. Really good technique. Winning it every time, also doing it safely, not putting either himself or his opponent into a position where an injury could take place. St. Paul thought about a shot, thought better of it. Being patient as they try to find a, an opening here in the Vlora defense. Of course, all 11 are back. 
So good defensive shape. They do get it near the 18, quickly pounced on. Once again, I believe that was Benz. Nice step of it. There's a good pass into the 18 there by the Blackhawks. Thirty-fourth minute complete, still scoreless. Long ball again to near corner here. Laura's gonna escort that one into touch. That's Bentz. Cosmopolis does a nice job of spinning his defender there and turning and keeping the pressure on. Winning the throw. Sulich trying to tap that up to Cooper. He does. We're going to have a call right at the 30. I believe that was played with a hand. I thought I saw a couple players indicate that. So we're going to, we're going to go with a handball on that one. I didn't, I didn't see a foul. And the customary marching off of 10 yards. Little hint, there's little marks on the field, each one's a yard apart. If I were the ref, I would just say, the ball's at the 29, do the math. <laughs> so it goes into the 18, looking far, oh, there's a nice head, it's over the top, but we're gonna have a foul called. It's just a little too aggressive going over the defender there. start by the Blackhawks. Let's see if Flora chooses to put on pressure or if they're going to just get back into defensive shape. Oh, here's an opportunity maybe for Cooper. He tries to guess which way the keeper goes. Played the far side, flicked on the far touch. This one's going to go into touch right by the home bench flicked up and over but unfortunately just across the line Sulich has it, spins his defender. Gets it passed on the long ball, but no one there for Vlora. Really picked up speed on the turf. Easy play for Oliva to pick that one up, although he did have to dive in order to prevent it from going across the goal line, which would have resulted in a corner. So a heads up play there by the Blackhawk keeper. Nice foot skills here, controlling the ball, making a run. Defense, that's number five, that's Trigueros. Can't quite get that past Blackhawks defense, but they do advance it down near the attacking third, so able to get some numbers down there. Let's see if Laura can put anything together. Goes along with it. That one's headed out of the box. Quickly played up by the Blackhawks. They're going to look to counter attack. Nice team defense there by Valora. Preventing further penetration, forcing him back to the middle, and immediately helped out by defensive teammate for the clear. Now that allows Valora to regroup. Really working the long balls to the corners are the Blackhawks. It seems to be 
a big part of their strategy thus far in the first half. I believe we're going to have the fourth corner kick of the half for the Blackhawks. Larson tracks a ball down so we can actually get the game moving. It's played in, but short, easily headed out of danger. Sulich now has it. He's just going to let that one go out for the throw. Smopolis has it. ball for Cooper it's tough and he's facing the touch line there's not a whole lot he can do with that try to receive that with his chest but it's going to bounce off and it really has nowhere else to go it's almost an impossible play he can try just ducking and getting out of the way and hoping that the defense misses it but not a lot of options there for Cooper Flick by Larson. Comes up, finds Cooper. Plays it off the defense. That's Carrera. Deeper throw in here for Vlora. See if they can't get something into the middle. Put a nick on the board here in the 41st minute. Be nice to go into halftime with a lead. Oh, he's got a chance to turn, get a shot off potentially. Working something he's well defended, can't get one off. Just keeps going all the way across, taking contact and eventually losing possession. Mopolis trying to work all the way across the 18, but nothing but Blackhawk defenders in his way. They did a great job of preventing any sort of opening for a shot. Throw in here at midfield. Sulich steals that one, plays a through ball. It does get past. Can he get the shot if he has left? And it goes high. A great scoring opportunity there for Bernardi Nelson. A nice through ball by Sulich. Unfortunately, just got under it too much. Getting close to halftime. There could be some add-on time we'll see how that works out once we get past the 45th minute here's a shot but Wolf's in perfect position couldn't quite tell by the angle up here if that was actually on goal but we give it credit for that so we'll count that as a save the first of the game for either goalkeeper about the 45. Cleared, Benz is gonna track this down, he's got speed. Wolf will play it across, looking to attack the far touch, they're gonna go deep. Nice little chip up in the air, this one's flicked on nicely, Vicente.
Cooper put pressure on, I believe, one possession with a throw in here. Still plenty of time in the half to get a goal. Just got to get one into a good, good place on the field to get a good shot off. Mopolis has it. Finds Sulich, but he was under pressure. Tough to do anything with that. Ends up going into the bench, which is empty right now for the Blackhawks. They've got players keeping warm down past the left goal line, stretching and keeping loose just in case they're called upon. Hard to imagine people getting cold 86 degree humid weather, but it happens. My wife would probably have a blanket. There's a breeze. Bents. That was Alvarez. Wolf has to come out and get rid of that one quickly, and he does all the way past midfield. Pretty sure he wasn't attempting to score again. Oh, a nice chip up and over. Cooper there. Good pass by the defense. Oh, a nice step up and steal here. Mopolis has it. It's about a two on three, maybe four. He's trying to get some teammates in. He does, plays it back. Better numbers for both squads now. Near touch. Bernardi Nelson has it. Let's see if he crosses on the ground. He does, tries to play defeat. Which if it gets through is really good. It's much easier to control and get a shot off quickly. Benz slows that attack down, but quickly re regained by the Blackhawks. Bents again, tabbing it forward. This is Bernardi Nelson. Oh, fancy little move there. The Blackhawks have it. They don't have numbers. This foul by Bents, that was a pretty obvious one, unfortunately. And he knows it. Kind of given the sign of, yep, sorry about that. So this will be a opportunity here for a shot on goals. It's inside the 25 yard line. So you're talking, you know, 32, 33 yards out. Of course, it's it's off the near post. But these guys definitely have a leg to put this one on if they choose. I think that would be the Probably the best strategy. We're, we're already into our 48th minute. We don't know how much time is left in this half. So they don't want to be too cute here. You might just want to say, all right, let's see if we can't get the perfect strike and put it in. There'll be a three-man wall by Vlora. Everyone else holding at the 18. They do play it to the near side, then try to cross. Wanted a handball. There's none of that. That's cleared out. They're going to do a quick rethrow, see if they can't get something set up. This one's going to be headed by Sulich in the touch as we're getting towards the end of the 48th minute. Not sure how many more minutes we'll have here. Looks like we got it situated. Only one ball now in field. Thrown in. That one's headed out. Here's a volley that goes way out and across the short fence for the soccer version of a ground rule double. And that is halftime. All right. So a Cautious half, really. There's not a whole lot of great scoring opportunities for either team. We got three shots on goal, or three shots, I should say, 
maybe a fourth there by the the Blackhawks right at the end of the half. We'll give them credit for that, but but none on on goal except one that was even questionable. So not a lot of saves. We had one corner for Vlora, four for the Blackhawks. Handful of fouls on each team. We are going to take a break for halftime. We'll be back for the second half. My name is Skip Newton here at Bob Pate Stadium in Burnsville. Vlora FC and the St. Paul Blackhawks both tied at zero.
Welcome back to Bob Pate Stadium here in Burnsville, Minnesota. We are just about ready to kick off the second half of tonight's match between Vlora FC and the St. Paul Blackhawks. Knotted up nil to nil. Once again, Vlora needs to maintain the fourth place finish in the standings with a draw or a win tonight. If they do so, they are in the playoffs. If they lose, then the Blackhawks will move up into fourth place and claim that spot. Glad to be with you. My name is Skip Newton here on Vlora TV. Just kicked off the second half. Vlora wearing red, going left to right across the pitch. And a couple of decent scoring chances in the first half. I think the scoring opportunities for Vlora were a little bit better than that of the Blackhawks. But nothing dangerous on goal. Here's a drop kick by Wolf deep into the corner. Is now quite a bit of the field is in the shade as the sun is setting behind us on a steamy evening. It's down to about 85 according to my temperature gauge here and humid so there was a mandatory water break in the first half about halfway through we'll see if they do that again in the second half my guess is they will. Wolf's gonna 
roll this one out. That's Chigueros. Part of that really strong back line here for Vlora. Again, nothing, nothing really dangerous for the Blackhawks as of yet. Ricardo Vera, number two, getting harassed and he maintains enough of possession to win the throw-in. Now he has it, trying to get it over to Sulich. Cooper comes back, well done. Oh, one time, just too deep. Right idea there, trying to put a quick strike over the top of the back line, see if they can't get a break into the 18. We're gonna have a goal kick. Nice header down field there by Jez Walker Patterson of the Blackhawks. They maintain possession at midfield here. That pass is Deflected back, and now Sulich will win possession, but they're going to call a foul. That was by the assistant referee as he gave the flag a little waggle, and ball's already back in play. That's the first foul of the half. Cooper has it at midfield, looking for a teammate. He's going to attack open space. Let's see if he can't make a run. That one's knocked away on a slide tackle into touch. It'll be a throw in for Vlora. No foul on the calls. He did make contact with the ball first. Vera's going to take this throw in as he tracks the ball down. Finds Cooper down in the corner. He's got at least one guy on him. Oh, a nice play back to the 18. This is one, and here's a shot. Not quite there, drops it back. Here's an opportunity. Shot in the middle, and a goal! He was onside. We have a shot and a goal. A huge goal for Vlora. In the 50th minute, they take a big 1-0 lead. The Blackhawks standing around. They thought that was an offside position. It was not a perfect finish into the corner. A huge goal for Vlora. See if we can't get the jersey number on that. Sounds like that was number eight, Demetrius Bernardi Nelson with the goal. A huge goal there by Vlora, taking the 1-0 lead. Here's a left-footed shot. Oh, a nice save by Wolf. That was easily the best scoring chance of the match so far for the Blackhawks. First time Wolf's really been challenged all night. Knocks it harmlessly to the side over the goal line. It'll be a corner kick, the first of the second half for St. Paul. Now with their season on the line, they will need to pick up the intensity. They go deep. It's played, look like off the 
Blackhawks, but not really on goal. They couldn't get anything on. It couldn't redirect it on goal. So now a quick counterattack here for Vlora. Oh, unfortunately a good defensive play, but this one's played down the far touch. This one's onside as well. We have a shot. Olivia came way out of his goal to block that. Otherwise, that would have been an awesome opportunity for goal number two. The intensity picking up here. The Blackhawks know that they now need to get two goals. Here's an opportunity for Sente. He's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He gets just past him. Here's an opportunity, a shot, and a goal! With the rebound, the second goal of the half in the 52nd minute. Looks like that was number 16, Robert Cooper. Vicente took the shot. It was deflected and saved temporarily by Olivio, but Cooper was right there for the rebound and got it past the defense. That's his fifth goal of the season. It is two to nil here in the 52nd minute. So a first half that had very little awesome scoring chances really for either team all of a sudden completely changes here in the second half with a flurry of activity. A couple of goals, huge goals for Vlora. The first one, number eight, Bernardi Nelson in the 50th minute, then just two minutes later, number 16, Robert Cooper. Sandwiched around a... Good scoring chance for St. Paul that was well defended by Wolf. And all of a sudden, Flora puts themselves in excellent position to win this match and earn their spot in the playoffs. Strategies are, gonna, strategies are gonna need to change here for, for both teams. I would expect St. Paul to be a little more aggressive, getting down the field, taking more chances. Of course, Vlornau can think a little more defensively, take fewer chances, but still look to counterattack like they did on that last goal. It was a beautiful counter, really set up by Vicente as he had an opportunity one-on-one -on -one with Olivio. Olivio was able to save it, but not secure possession went back to Cooper and he buried it just getting it past the defender that had taken Olivio's place in goal but he put it in the corner his team lead fifth goal of the season here's a ball on the far side that one's onside this is Nelson crossing for Cooper it can't quite connect plays that one down gets it back now he goes in there and this one's well played by Olivio intercepting that cross. Otherwise, Cooper was right there, and he had an opportunity to make this a lead that might be too hard to come back from. Blackhawks looking to counter. Flora quickly getting back on defense. They win it. Sente has it. Trying to find Cooper, but errant pass, but they get it right back. This is Vera. Over to Vicente, a little rough. Oh, and this one's just played into touch. Perhaps some frustration there for the Blackhawks. No even attempt to control. We're going to have a substitution, a couple of them here for the Blackhawks. Looks like th three new players as they replace their entire front line. should have a throw in
I'm not sure what the confusion is here. There was, if it was, might have been played out because of an injury. I think that's what we're missing here. I was wondering why he he played that out so aggressively. It's because he had an injured teammate, so they took care of the injury problem. But then, as the good sportsmanship dictates, for make sure they get the ball back with possession. Now they have it midfield, looking to perhaps put one on goal. Instead, they're going to go to the far side into the 18, trying to set up an opportunity here. That one's deflected away and cleared all the way down past midfield. So we've got number 23 at forward in for the Blackhawks, Ibrahima Nida, and number 20, Kava Jana. Both players have some decent size up front there for the Blackhawks. Jana had it momentarily there. Interesting note on 23, Da, also a assistant coach for the Blackhawks, so a player coach. Not something you see all that frequently in really all of sports these days. The last time I heard of a player coach, it was Pete Rose. Long time ago in a baseball game far, far away. I'm not willing to bet that's the last one. Thank you very much. And being corrected, it is youth, youth coach for the Blackhawks, so that makes a little more sense. Blackhawks, a strong club out of St. Paul. Historically, always been very tough on the pitch. They're going to have to bring their A game to the last 30 plus minutes here if they're going to want to get back in. You know, foul on the far side. One's headed out nicely by Vlora and headed again. Vlora doing a good job of ensuring that they've got the numbers to prevent any sort of shot. A luxury that teams can go with when They've gifted themselves with a two-goal cushion as we enter the 61st minute on a beautiful night here in Burnsville. Ball goes into touch. I'd like to once again thank our club sponsors, Los Andes Latin Bistro and Jim Law Firm. Thank you so much again for sponsoring the Vlora Football Club. Some contact, no call. St. Paul has possession. Can't get a shot, though. Some stingy defense, as we've seen all game long. This one's played into the 18. Oh, a nice recovery. Here's an opportunity, but nothing on the shot. Redirected towards goal. But couldn't get anything on that as number 14, Wolf, is able to possess. That's the goalkeeper. I'm sorry, 14 was the attacker. Wolf, number, number one. So a little more pressure here by the Blackhawks. Really highlighted by the two new players they inserted into the game. 
be interesting to know why they waited until they were down two goals to come in. This one's going to be played nicely by Vicente. Oh, they're going to call him a little too much on that slide tackle, and he will get the yellow caution card. Just his first of the game. Each team now with one yellow card. So that's Adonis Vicente with the yellow caution card in the 62nd minute. So this will be a free kick near the touchline, so difficult angle for a shot, but definitely in a good position to put this one into the 18, look for a teammate to strike the ball on goal with a head. Interestingly, and not surprisingly though, all Blackhawk players except for their goalkeeper are up within 25 yards of the goal. They need to put pressure on that one. I don't think it went where they wanted. And here, unfortunately, is a miss kicked, and they are going to call a handball in the box, resulting in a penalty kick. An unfortunate just misstep there. So this is obviously a fantastic scoring opportunity for St. Paul trying to get back into this game. Wolf, the goalkeeper, has to be in contact with the line. Once the ref blows his whistle, shot can be attempted. I believe that's number eight. He shoots a dive. Nice one by Wolf. Unfortunately, it does go in. I don't think it was eight on that. At the 64th minute goal. We'll see if we can't get that. Get that number. It was a little hard to see this time of night. So two to one now, back to a one goal game. That second goal by Cooper, the difference so far, and that's a big one. Again, Vlora needs to get the draw or the win to advance in the playoffs. It was number six, defense Ryan Swanda with the tally there on the penalty kick.
apologize for the sound quality there. A little mic issue. And yellow cards on both teams. On number seven for both teams. So there you go. Kapa two is the one for Vlora. And Anthony Mancio, midfielder for the Blackhawks. So hopefully cooler heads prevail. We get back to playing some good, clean football. That's what we've had for the majority of this game. Of course, there's always fouls, but nothing that looked like it was being taken personally by either team. Misfire there on the pass. Blackhawks have it again. They need to score. That one's offside. I think that's the first offside of the game. So just a couple of steps as the AR was right in position. So this would be an indirect free kick. For Valoras, we get into the 72nd minute, 2-1, to one, on a must-win game for St. Paul. Flora just needing a win or draw to advance to the playoffs. If they can play the type of defense that they've been playing really all season long, but especially here tonight, they should be in good shape as the only goal resulting from a penalty kick, which Wolf did a fantastic job of nearly getting to in the corner. I don't know if he guessed on that or if he read something on the shooter, but... Swanis kick and Wolf both went the far side and it was almost saved. Another injury is went up and over the back. I don't know if we got another yellow coming here. Yes, we do. So that's the third of the game for Whoever received that, it's tough to tell from this angle. I don't know if that was on a Vlora player, if it's on the injured player. We need those situations where the refs are mic'd up and they can announce what's going on. Wouldn't that be nice? I would, I would thoroughly love that. I think that would add something to the game clear up some of this stuff. And they could do the little rectangle thing when they're looking at the monitor for instant replay. I mean, that'd be really fancy. I do want to take this break in the action as an opportunity to thank the person behind the scenes here, Katie Brink, doing a lot of the work to bring these Vlora TV games to all of you viewers out there. Really works tirelessly to set up all of the audio and video, making sure everything's working correctly. Giving me a, a weird look when I'm talking without the mic on. Shout out to you, Jay, thank you very much. <laughs> all right, back to live action. Here's a spin and a shot, it's a hard one. Fortunately, goes high. So we will have a goal kick. That was a blast. Now is that water break that we mentioned earlier. It comes a little bit later here in the second half, but perhaps a good time for both teams just to catch their breath. Gives the coaches a little bit of time to do some quick strategy session as well.
All right, welcome back. My name is Skip Newton here on Vlor TV. We are in the 76th minute. I'm sure we'll have at least three minutes of add-on time as we've had quite a few stops in the second half. A little note about the head coach, the St. Paul Blackhawks, Carter Albrecht, is head coach of Vlora's UPSL men's team. He left for the Blackhawks after last season. So this is Albrecht's first time coaching from the visitor bench here at Bob Pate Stadium. So a welcome back of sorts for Carter. Hopefully he doesn't have a happy welcome back with a late comeback victory, but welcome back all the same. I believe the ball will be placed right around, it looks like the ref is walking down towards the, oh that's right, it's a goal kick, excuse me, I was wondering where, where things were going, so we stopped on a goal kick after that rocket of a shot by number 23, Daw, who just came into the game, really after after the second goal by Vlora, Vlora scored two goals, one in the 50th minute, one in the 52nd minute, so two quick ones to take a 2-0 lead, and then in the 64th minute, a penalty kick after a handball in the box was scored by the Blackhawks. And there's a slip and a trip. Easy call, but... I believe that was inadvertent. It looked like he just lost his footing and just happened to take out the Blackhawk player at the same time. Have another foul down just outside the box in the corner there. Quite a few fouls this half by Vlora. Not sure if that's being set up by some new players for St. Paul, maybe a little faster, more physical. Vlora is adjusting to that still. This is just outside the box. Again, a, a shallow angle, so not the greatest for shooting, but an outstanding opportunity to pass into the 18, if not even near the six, get a head on to goal. Lobs that one in, it does go for the far corner. That one's headed, but Wolf's in perfect position. While they got the head shot on, it was well defended there by Vlora wasn't able to really step in and put anything on it. Wolf easily made that play. Oh, a nice little move by Sente on the near touch line. Here's a long shot. Easily saved. Perhaps a little ambitious there from that distance. Both teams wanting possession of this throw. Vlora wins it. And now we've got another player down. That's Hector Trigueros. Now because he went down when the ball was already stopped, there's no forced need to leave the field. He's allowed to, to stay on. Just Ref checked him out, made sure he's okay. Should mention number 17 forward, Carlos Bokeen into the game.
I believe he replaced Robert Cooper, who scored the second goal for Florida Knight, his team leading fifth of the season. Got another free kick here for the Blackhawks. Some discussion going on with the center ref on the bench of Laura. This kick will be taken from near midfield. They have plenty of space. My guess is they're going to play it short, and they do. They bring it in and now quickly lob this one into the 18. Wolf is right there. He'll catch that one in the back of the end zone. I don't think a shot was the intent there. I think he just got a little too much on it. He was trying to put that ball in where a teammate could potentially flick that one with a head on the goal. Nice team defense there by Vlora forcing that one back. Blackhawks switch fields the other side. Advance quickly into open space. Far touch, dribble move into the middle. We have another foul, it's a trip. This will be another free kick for Vlora. Just didn't quite get there fast enough trying to stick his foot on the ball. Instead got the boots of the Blackhawks player. So we're coming up on the end of the 82nd minute. Another good scoring chance potentially here for the Blackhawks. I guess as we've got, in addition to the eight minutes of regular play, probably another four or five could be added on. Just based on the injuries, the goals. Seems like there's been quite a few stoppages outside the norm. He's lobbed in. The only person there was Trigueros. He couldn't couldn't reach it, didn't have to. So well defended. To be a goal kick for Laura once Wolf gets the ball. Normally the Laura back line really good at being patient, playing with possession, controlling play. But I think now that they're protecting a one goal lead they'll be more apt to get rid of it a little bit quicker get it downfield faster take fewer chances here's a ball through this one is onside an opportunity a great save by wolf and the rebound is put in a goal for the blackhawks wolf with a great initial save unfortunately could not save the last one as the 84th minute results in the game tying goal for St. Paul, a quick attack. <clears throat> we got some injured players down. Looks like Wolf and a, one or two defenders. We'll see if we can't get the jersey number on the goal. A huge goal for the Blackhawks. Tying it at two, and now things get really interesting again. The Blackhawks must win the game to advance. Wolf plays this one out of harm's way. Here come the Blackhawks again. Oh, here's a shot. Wolf with a diving save to his left. Well played. Shots are coming much more frequently here for the Blackhawks ever since, really, the, the two substitutions came into the game when Vlora got the 2-0 lead way back in the 52nd minute. The last, I'll say, 20 minutes has been fairly dominated by the Blackhawks with that penalty kick for their first goal. Now they're generating quite a few scoring opportunities. This corner kick played short and 
floor handles it easily. Gonna get some substitutions now for Flora. The goal was by number 23, Ibrahim Nda. Ball goes past the goal line. It'll be a goal kick here for Vlora, just holding on, hoping to secure the draw, and get into the playoffs. Wolf's going to play that one deep to midfield. Controlled here nicely by Vlora. They're going to go down the far touchline. They don't have a whole lot of numbers, but the deeper they can get it, the better. Best to just maintain possession down there for a while until he gets some help. He's got nowhere to go to. But he somehow manages to maintain possession. There are three defenders around. That is brilliant. Just awesome skills down there to hold on to that. Laura very content here to just possess the ball and keep it away from St. Paul. Now they call a foul. So St. Paul's going to do a quick kick down. And here comes the Blackhawks once again. Near touch. Played into the 18. Oh, nice header there by the defense. Another one out. And now we have an injury timeout. I did not see the cause of that. I don't know if it was contact. Yes, I believe it was. It looks like we're going to have a free kick. So yet another foul on Vlora. The fouls are mounting. The opportunities for the Blackhawks are as well as we are in the 88th minute here of a tie game. The Blackhawks with two goals in the last 24 minutes to come back from a 2-0 deficit, deficit. So it's played far side in 18. There is a Blackhawk there. He's going to redirect with his foot, but easy save for Wolf. Well played. He's going to give this one a ride. Big drop kick. Three quarters of the way down the field almost. Looks like Yazbek, Adam Yazbek, number 20, into the game. He has possession now. One of the substitutions that happened a few minutes ago. Trying to find a teammate. He's got nothing. Here's a quick one-two pass. Unfortunately, goes into touch. I believe this is... Helmet it is Vlora's ball. Of course, St. Paul hustling to get that because they don't want to see time wasted. The clock is right now still on the side of Vlora. A 2-2 tie would result in the securing of fourth place in the conference standings and a appearance in the playoffs. Blackhawks get it past midfield into lower territory. Pulling it back and regrouping, looking for something long, no doubt. See if they can't hit a runner. They do, but this one goes to Wolf. He secures it down on the ground. Killing off a few precious seconds here as we're coming near the end of regulation and then into stoppage time. Punts that one into touch, which actually isn't the worst thing right now in the world for Vlora. And 
And we are 90 minutes in, so it is officially stoppage time. Your guess is as good as mine on this one as far as how much time will be added. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with five minutes. I think we're going to get five minutes of stoppage. This one's played deep and headed around, quickly cleared but not totally out. Back to the far side. Playing down the corner, deflected away, but this will result in a corner kick. I believe that's the third of the second half for St. Paul. And again, they're going to be looking to get this one back in fairly quickly. All of their players are within 30 yards of the goal line, except for the goalkeeper. There's a header that's deflected by the defense. Nice play. We've got a knockdown, no call. I think that was a good good wave off. Looked, looked a bit of a of a dive there. Centered on the ground. Nice defensive play. Once touched out. If this could be kept in, this could waste some more time. And it is. Well played. Oh, we've got a wide open player at midfield. Let's see if he can win the foot race. He has to slide in order to get possession. Not quite able to get there was Bolquin. Bokeen, excuse me. Here comes St. Paul. Second minute of, minute of stoppage. Cross in, nearly shot into the goal, but I believe that was deflected out by the defense, so we'll have a corner kick. I'm willing to bet had he not played that, that would have been an outstanding scoring opportunity for St. Paul. Here's a long corner. This one's headed back in and then headed out deep. Knee back in. You don't see that very often. Ball has not hit the ground there. It finally does. Tough volley. Played with the knee. Headed by Vlora. And I believe we have a foul in the box on St. Paul. A dangerous play, as the ref indicates with the high kick there. So a flurry of action in the box there for St. Paul. Now here's the long free kick almost all the way down the field. Again, wasting as much time as possible here in the third extra minute. Nice step up by the defense to play this one back, and it's won by St. Paul. Naturally, Flora keeping all their players back, playing defensively, just trying to run out the clock. Far side looking for a cross or a shot, bringing in the 18 double teamed, and there's nothing but red there. Passes that one out. Oh, a nice ball across the field into open space. Vlora able to run on. They can maintain possession, try to play it deep. It was knocked into touch. We're going to have a throw in in the fourth add on minute. sure what the whistle was there. I didn't see the referee's indication. He just called Audi. He might he might have issued a a yellow cautionary card to the bench. So that could have been what happened on that one. I thought I did see his arm in the air. So yeah, I think thank you Katie. I think that was what happened as well. St. Paul bring it up quickly. They play it deep. That one's going to be headed into touch in front of the Blackhawk bench. Another whistle, another stop. I don't know what this is for. This might be a, an injury timeout here. And this is not a situation where you're going to play down for even a few seconds. Well, I'm doing a count of players just to see how many are on the field for Vora. There we go. Am I blind or are we down a man? I'm only counting nine red. Plus Wolf. Okay. 
Here's a cross that's headed up. We are now past the fifth extra minute, and we have a foul on the Blackhawks, so into the sixth add-on minute. Flora is definitely sitting with only 10 players on the field, so they are playing a man down, which explains a little bit why St. Paul's been able to control and dominate play. I'm not really sure what happened and why they're down. I don't know if a, a player received a second yellow and, and got a red and we missed that. I apologize if that's what, what happened. Let's see if we can not get clarity on that. Of course, the game hopefully is going to end soon. Again, we are knotted up at two. Flora just needs to hold on to the draw here. Played out and they win the throw. It's thrown back in. Now entering the seventh minute of extra time. Quick restart here for St. Paul. This could be their last chance. Got to believe we're getting close to the end. They play that deep into the corner. No one around. That's a nice break for Vlora. Wolf will walk over and find the spare ball. Set that one up. No doubt he's going to give this one a ride. St. Paul steps up and wins this one. They're bringing it up quickly. They need to get something to goal soon. They do drop this one back. Now they're going to put it into the 18. So it's headed out well played there. Trigueros with a great header out of harm's way. Daw was trying to get a shot. Have a cross. That one's deflected out. Into touch. We'll have a Restart throw. I'm not sure what the situation here is now. But a player has left the field for Vlora now being motioned back on. I'm thoroughly confused on what's going on. It looked like he was told to go off and now he's being brought back on. Eventually we're gonna have live action back again. Again, Vlora playing a man down. Here's a head, oh, near the goal and just clear, but not out. A long cross to switch fields there. Not sure why they went that direction. Played into touch, we're gonna have a throw in. One of the bench players for the Blackhawks playing the role of a ball boy over there, trying to keep the pace of the game up. Finishing the 99th minute. And there's the obvious foul and not a good one to take by the Blackhawks. More time coming off the clock, time that they do not have, and an opportunity for Vlor to get this one deep. Of course, they're going to keep as many players back as possible. This one's won by Vlora, and they'll just play it down to the keeper. I think the corner would have been more preferred, but anything to that direction of the field. And finally, we have hit the conclusion of this game. Vlora able to hold on to a 2-2 draw. Get a scoring recap for you. The 50th minute saw a goal by Demetrius Bernardi Nelson, and then the 52nd minute, 
the team leader in goal scored, Robert Cooper, put in one just a couple minutes later. The 64th minute, a goal by the Blackhawks, Ryan Swanda on a penalty kick. And then in the 84th minute, Iba Nda scores four. The Blackhawks to tie it at two. They are unable to get another goal. So a huge point for the Blackhawks. They finish the regular season in fourth place. That is good enough to get them into the playoffs. Please be sure to pay attention to social media. We will announce when that playoff game is as soon as that is figured out. We hope that you were able to join us if that game is indeed here at Bob Pate Stadium in Burnsville, Minnesota. We would love to bring it to you. Either way, Vlora is advancing to the playoffs with a 2-2 draw here tonight. Thank you so much to Katie Brink and Vlora TV for bringing you this game. My name is Skip Newton. Once again, Vlora 2, St. Paul 2. Good night, everyone. Second yellow. He never. I never saw him take the red out. Yeah. Second yeah. yellow. He was a second yellow. Good game though, we made it. Yep, we did make it. Good night. Good night, thank you. Yeah.